Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. This is Courtney with the LSA, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our webinar series. Today's webinar, How Voice Search is Unraveling Content Marketing as We Know It, and it will be brought to you by our guest presenter, Colin, from Chatmeter. During the webinar, feel free to type any questions you may have in the question box on the screen, and following the presentation, Colin will answer those questions for you. Before we get started, just a few LSA housekeeping issues. Next slide, please. This webinar will be recorded and available to you within 38 hours. We'll email all of the registrants with a link. You can also view past webinars on our website by looking under the Insights tab and clicking Webinars. Next slide, please. I did want to mention a couple upcoming LSA events. We do have the PLACE conference coming up uh, on June 15th or I'm sorry, on September 16th in New York City. And then we also have our Tech Adoption Summit coming up in San Francisco on November 7th. So be on the lookout for more information on these as well as other upcoming LSA events. With that, let's get started. Over to you, Colin. Great, thank you very much. Appreciate uh, the introduction. Uh, we'll do a little bit background on myself uh, really quick. My background has been about 20 years in product marketing and management. Uh, and as well as marketing at various tech companies and startups going back to 98, 99 in the dot-com boom. Uh, my last company being able was actually pioneering mobile local search and specifically actually voice search. So uh, this is about 14, 15 years ago when we had a voice search app uh, that powered local search. So just like you could do today, uh, you could search for, say, Starbucks. We would record that send it to a server for voice recognition processing, and then send it to another server to get local search results, and then finally bring back Starbucks results in our map. I think it took about 15 seconds. Uh, but uh, we we're very early pioneers there, so I'm very excited to talk about voice search and really see the adoption over the last uh, several years uh, and anticipating some very rapid adoption moving forward. And a little bit about uh, chat meter. I started that back in 2009, and we are a local SEO and reputation platform. We do reviews, listings, social, and rankings. And uh, we're managing over 1.5 million stores. We have some of the biggest brands in the country, as you guys can see, and monitoring and, and managing billions of reviews, mentions, blogs, et cetera. So some of the uh, presentation I'm going to go through today is really taking learnings both from our customers as well as the massive amount of data that we've collected in our platform. So I thought it was important to give you a little backstory there. Um, so let's start, take a quick look at our agenda. Our voice search is unraveling content marketing as we know it. So we will start with the adoption of voice search, talk a little bit about what brought us here, uh, then dive into what a VEO strategy is and what VEO is, because it's probably a term you've never heard of. Uh, and the five building blocks of your new content strategy. So really thinking about what you need to do moving forward uh, for you and your clients. So a little backstory on uh, voice search and really voice recognition in general. Uh, it actually goes back to the 50s, if you weren't aware. Uh, very early pioneer pro projects uh, by Pac Bell and IBM and others and government entities. Uh, and, and as you probably have anticipated, really most of the progress has been in the last really five to seven to eight years. A lot of that is based on AI technology. So applying AI has really helped improve the recognition levels uh, within the last several years. I'm sure many of you guys remember a lot of those funny ads in the past in which uh, the voice recognition wasn't working properly. Uh, hopefully those are uh, far behind us now. So now that voice recognition levels are acceptable, we're starting to see usage is skyrocketing. And it's happening across many different devices. So you've got obviously started with uh, Siri on the phone and now Google and Alexa device, I'm sorry, and Android devices. Uh, you've got it in your car. And of course now the home speaker device, home devices are taking off with Google Home and uh, just the massive adoption of Alexa, especially with the Alexa Dot on Prime Day recently, 
uh, as well as um, what was it, Black Monday uh, last year. Uh, and thirty dollars is driving massive adoption for those devices. And that's what we're seeing today. So from a numbers perspective, one in five are actually doing a mobile voice search. Specifically within local, about 46% of those users are actually using voice search to search for businesses every single day. It's probably the most exciting stuff for me, as I mentioned, because we were trying to power this stuff, uh, you know, 14, 15 years ago. So really excited to see that level of adoption. Uh, one in six actually own a smart speaker. And the biggest, most powerful stat on this slide is that half of all searches will be conducted by voice in 2020. I don't recall exactly who the source was there. My assistant is rattling off various things, but is unsure as well. So if you have any question, uh, follow up with us. Uh, but I believe it's a pretty uh, reputable firm. Tom score is what I'm hearing in, the, uh, in my left ear. So uh, anyway, so the point being is continued rapid adoption of voice search. So that's really why it's important to think about putting together your voice search strategy. Uh, the other thing that's important to understand too is that it does, voice search is getting adopted very broadly across all sectors. So you can certainly see the really interesting uh, obviously, searching for things like restaurants, uh, food delivery, et cetera, is a huge impact. It's 72 uh, percent. Really interesting to see healthcare up there at 68 percent. I don't know if people are self-diagnosing with uh, with Alexa, but that's kind of interesting. Uh, but really, you can see is really across the board at the lowest, really 40 percent. So uh, really, it's hitting everyone uh, today. So let's talk a little bit about kind of mobile voice search as well as the impact on kind of SEO in general. So as we know, traditionally, 34% of clicks kind of go to that first position. So the first position has a huge traction in terms of getting people to click on that results. Um, this is a great example. And obviously, the, the important thing to understand is that 34% really goes up to 100% within voice search. So if you think about in this example, uh, how much caffeine in a cup of coffee, someone may speak that query, the answer is 95 milligrams. So again, you don't have that visual element unless you are on a mobile device and it sends you to kind of a search page, but in many cases it will still read off the answer to you. The point being is the battle now is not for page one, the battle is for position one really providing those answers to all of these uh, voice recognition and voice search platforms. So I took this one step further and did some really interesting uh, specific queries that I think is really important for our local search. This being a LSA webinar, uh, we tried to focus a lot of the content through this presentation on our industry and our space. So this is actually a query I did with uh, Apple Siri, Siri device uh, in the iPhone. <laughs> uh, where is the best soy milk vanilla latte downtown? So these are the results that I got. Roast Coach Coffee Bar, Jing Books uh, and Cafe, Marisco's uh, Mexican Place, and Tokyo Deli downtown. Uh, you can see it is not in order of location because Tokyo Deli is closer than some of the others. Uh, they're all getting pretty strong reviews, as you can see, uh, and, but then it's really difficult to tell if all of these guys have a soy milk vanilla latte and guessing that uh, they're just taking latte and translating that into coffee shops, uh, but not 100% sure. Uh, I do know that I probably wouldn't go to a, a Japanese place to get my vanilla soy latte uh, and I believe that Marisco's is a uh, Mexican food truck so again probably not the best choice wouldn't be my primary choice of results so uh, they may, may want to continue working on uh, their voice search recognition and specifically product recognition results there and that's really what we're going to talk about here in a minute so Google and Android you can see the results here they actually did select one single location 
So where's the best one in Okinawa? Well, I'll tell you, they told me it's the Kuma Cafe. Very difficult to understand why they chose that uh, outside of it being a coffee shop. Uh, it was not the nearest coffee shop to where I was at the time. Uh, so it's really interesting to see that. Uh, and I just double checked that against best coffee downtown, by the way. Uh, and that location was nowhere in the search results. And as you can see, uh, it's not all location based as well. I'm sure many of you guys are aware. Uh, there's a lot of optimization there. So uh, they'll work at a, and we'll talk about this in a minute, all the parameters that Google will look at to determine, you know, those top results. You can see there are others that are closer to me, like this little dot here, that were not in kind of the top three of that result. This is again, uh, showing up as a search result on a browser on my uh, Android Pixel device. Okay, uh, so the important thing to understand, again, the massive adoption that's happening, uh, we're just at the precipice here. So uh, everyone is starting to see adoption, but it's really just a tidal wave that's coming up. Uh, and, and the point being is that content marketing will be changed forever as we know it. And um, so your strategies of the past is uh, is helpful, but you're going to have to tweak those strategies. Uh, and ultimately, if you don't, you will be left behind or your clients will be left behind. If you're not uh, optimizing for voice search, others will and they will dominate uh, those results and provide those answers to customers and convert uh, them away from your business and your customers. All right, so what we're doing is talking about not SEO, but the new world of VEO. VEO is a, uh, actually Chapman or Trademark's name, but we are pushing this as this concept of optimizing for voice engines or voice recognition platforms to provide those answers. So it's all about optimizing your content, your location information, and brand information to increase your likelihood of powering those voice search results. At the end of the day, consumers are using voice search and voice recognition platforms, voice agents, whatever you want to call them, to provide answers. So ultimately, it's your job to provide answers that will drive them to uh, your clients. So why VEO? Uh, well, of course, voice is easier to sp speak than type, especially when you're on the go. That's why we're seeing massive adoption within local. Imagine people driving around. They are using voice search. That was always a concept, even going back to the V-enable back in the day, uh, we knew that was the way that adoption was gonna happen. Ultimately, there's only one result, right? So if you're not that one result, game over, you're out of the game. You know, uh, three, voice search is three times more likely to be used than text for a local search. Again, really relevant for uh, anyone that's in the local uh, space. So there's four major strategies here behind your VEO strategy. One is optimizing your business listing. So the regular traditional stuff you got to remember to do. Two, speeding up your website. So we all know the, the, the changes that Google is making around making sure that your mobile site is optimized and loads quickly. Uh, and of course, updating your content strategy, which we're going to focus on. Uh, and ultimately test it. So we'll run through these, but the big focus really is on that content strategy for voice. So what does that mean? So again, there are essentially building blocks that go along with your content strategy for your local clients, listing accuracy, listing optimization, and making sure that you are mobile friendly. And ultimately providing answers and then schema markup. So we'll go through these in detail, but these really are your building blocks of success for VEO. So, uh, of course, without the basic building blocks, again, you're not even in the game. You've got to have, these are table stakes. Uh, you got to have accurate listings. You got to optimize those listings and all of your pages and your site needs to be mobile friendly. So as I'm sure everybody on this call knows, for, you know, uh, you got to keep your listings accurate. Name, address, and phone number has to be consistent across the web. I'm sure many of you guys have seen this uh, slide, which is uh, the ranking uh, factors that are uh, traditionally provided uh, 
Uh, I think there's like 100 SEO consultants that, that uh, participate in this study. Uh, but the basic ranking factors are uh, things like your Google My Business signals, uh, your inbound links, on-page signals, citations, reviews. I'm sure you guys are all well aware of this. I'm not going to go into this details. But ultimately, half of uh, how Google determines rankings is dedicated to listings. So again, make sure that you guys are doing this either directly or hiring a listing management uh, firm. There's many out there, including Chatmeter. Uh, so, building up your listings by adding photos and information. So, again, optimizing your listings, making sure that those listings have photos, they have content, they have descriptions. All that information is going to be pulled and utilized by Google when determining answers for customers. On reviews and increased rankings, and show your customers how you care. So, ultimately, you know, reviews are a key part of it. And it is likely that uh, reviews are going to be taken into consideration when, when they're continuing to build uh, that answer solution. Uh, we're not seeing it a lot today, uh, but I would anticipate that's going to increase in the future. Uh, and of course, use Google My Business Post to feature location uh, deals and content. Uh, Google My Post, we're seeing some very early data that Google My Posts are having huge impact on rankings as well. So if you're not doing Google posts or your customers are not doing Google posts, I would highly recommend you guys start doing those as well. Uh, adding to your menu, products and services. Do we have to do an uh, So making sure, uh, of course, your menu items should be optimized on uh, Google. So if someone's asking for, you know, where's the best barbecue brisket in town, they know that you serve barbecue brisket. So it's very important to make sure your menu items in there. Obviously, if you have products or services, in this case, the salon should be talking about uh, hair extensions, for example. So again, if someone's asking for where's the best place for hair extensions, they can pull from that metadata. Uh, and of course, making sure you have appointment booking. So uh, how can I easily book an appointment uh, for a men's haircut? Boom, right here is your result. Uh, and again, some of this is conceptual stuff. I'm not saying that this is active today, but it is likely that Google will be pulling this data uh, soon. So it's also important to actually understand where people are getting their data from. So if we look at some of the major devices that are being adopted today, uh, it's important to understand the, the actual listing information. So if you weren't aware, this is pretty shocking to, I think, a lot of people that Amazon Alexa is actually pulling their listing information directly from Yelp. So if you ask, uh, let's say you ask, is Home Depot still open? A common question is, at the end of the day, you're working on a project, maybe you're missing something, uh, you want to know if they're still open. So you have to make sure that your hours of operation are accurate on Yelp. So claiming and updating your listings on Yelp is vitally important to power the information on Alexa. Uh, Google Home obviously is going to be using Google Map data. That's pretty pretty clear. Uh, Siri is actually using Apple Maps, and if you weren't clear indirectly, they're also using a lot of they're using uh, data from Yelp to power Apple Maps. So there's an indirect kind of relationship there. Uh, Yelp does, I mean, Apple does have some listing information they get directly from listing management providers as well. Uh, so it is important to understand that if you are using a listing management provider, that they update Apple directly uh, as well. So China uh, is using uh, Microsoft's Bing data. So uh, I don't know if there's a massive amount of adoption at Cortana, uh, but for any of those users that are, uh, you want to make sure your information is accurate and up to date on Bing as well. Next, we want to make sure that we have mobile-friendly content. So uh, essentially, um, increasing your site speed, so having a mobile-responsive mobile, mobile responsive website, right, that's resizing, ensuring your videos. Uh, most of the people, I'm sure, are well aware of this, that Google just finally implemented this, uh, I think, within the last couple weeks. And so again, if you do, are not uh, a fast website, and they're not mobile friendly, you are going to get punished in the rankings. Okay, the next building block of our strategy is providing answers. 
So what does that actually mean? You have to start thinking about your target audience and what things they may ask of Alexa, of Siri, uh, and think about that. And then look to your uh, listings to provide common questions that your, your customers may have. So here you can see example, do you sell grounded Starbucks dark roast coffee? So again, uh, products are gonna be a big factor here. So it would it, think about that from a question. This would be a great uh, result from Albertsons if they think that's you know one of their biggest selling products, for example. Uh, not sure if coffee uh, grounds are, are their biggest selling product, but uh, you guys get the concept here. Uh, you would want to start building that for what's going to convert, right? And that's what we know as marketers. It's not necessarily just about getting those rankings and getting people to your page. It's about what's going to convert to a lead, convert to traffic to your store. So focus on that when you think about optimization. Uh, another great place to think about what people are asking and talking about are actually the review data. So you can look at reviews to understand what people are looking at, what they're most excited about, what they like about that store, that product offering, that service offering. Uh, it's a really good place to see uh, what are those conversations are going on. And ultimately, this is about kind of featured snippets. So featured snippets, what that is, is if you do a search within Google, uh, say a voice search, for example, or even if you're typing this in, you'll often see this little paragraph that comes up at the top of the page. If you're on a, uh, if you're doing a voice search, many cases, Google will actually just read this back to you. Uh, so those are the actual featured snippets that Google is looking out across the web to provide those answers to questions. You can see here about 41% of voice search answers come from those featured snippets. And so uh, what's happening here is that uh, in this case, the San Diego Zoo is providing uh, content here that is tagged. And we'll get it, and we'll talk about those tags and the schema markups here in a minute. Um, but ultimately, you are becoming a feature by answering those questions. So if we click here, it'll take me to a browser. Uh, we'll just open that page very quickly. So here you can see this is actually the featured snippet on the page. And they've actually marked that up so Google knows that this is an answer. It's a brief answer. And they can read it back to a customer. All right, so continuing on the path of providing answers. Uh, what can I do to become a featured snippet? How do I get my featured snippets as that first position number? So the first thing you need to understand is that Google does lean on the most popular and top rank websites to pull those snippets. However, uh, snippets can be featured anywhere on the results page. Only 30% of those actually show up in position number one. So just because you have a snippet and you uh, doesn't always mean that you are going to rank number one in the search results. Uh, but that is the goal, obviously, is to get to that position number one and have more snippets so that uh, they have more content to pull from. So you want to create a content. Imagine things like an FAQ page. It's a really good, good way to wrap your head around this. So an FAQ page with questions and answers that will allow you to drive conversations at an easy reading level. Very, very important, uh, especially if you think about something that's being read back to you, right? If it's complex, uh, you, people are going to get lost. So you want to make sure that it's very simple. Uh, you need to update your content. Like anything on the web, you got to keep it fresh. Google obviously looks at uh, for fresh content. And ultimately, the questions themselves are the ones that will be put into markup uh, header, sorry, markup language, and put specifically put in those H2 headers. So that's where the markup comes in. Uh, so we thought, you know, it's conceptually, what is it? Let's think about we were to put uh, markup language around chat reader and uh, look at the specific things and questions people may ask about chat meters. So it, I, I asked my marketing people to put together some concepts here uh, in order to give you guys some concepts of how would you do that for your website or for your customers. So one example is what is chat meter? So again, it's that concept of uh, just really simple questions. Uh, so we're marking up our About Us section on our About Us page. Chat Meter helps enterprise retail brands and agencies managing multiple locations. 
Uh, you get the idea. Uh, I'm not going to uh, self promote too much here, uh, but that's the idea. And then we thought about, okay, well, people may be asking, what is local SEO? So I'm not even familiar with that term. That's obviously for us, that is something local SEO is a, we're a local SEO platform, right? So we want to get in that position, number one, in order to answer the question with customers, but more importantly, provide those as lead gen to our website. So you can see the example here, local SEO is similar to SEO, except designed on local searches, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and learn more at our knowledge center. So specifically driving customers uh, directly to learn more. So we actually have, if you weren't aware, we have a local SEO knowledge center. Uh, it's very comprehensive. I think it's uh, eight or nine chapters or something. It goes through. There's uh videos are coming soon but uh you can dive into all the learnings around it we also have our help center here uh but you get the idea uh providing answers providing solutions and providing new more information uh in order to then drive lead generation so the last part schema markup so what is schema markup i assume most people are aware that's essentially marking up your page to tell google uh, specific information about that page and the content that's on that page. So using structured data to help them understand what's there, uh, marking it up, you want to mark up things like content, contact information, uh, services, products, FAQs. Uh, I'm sure many of you guys are marking up review data. Uh, and, you know, all of those elements that tell Google important information and makes it easier for them to select you as that top result. Uh, interesting note here of the future, Google is actually releasing what's called speakable structured data. It's piloting for new sites today. Uh, so imagine if you wanted to ask, you know, what's uh, the um, what's interesting or what's the latest news for uh, San Diego local news. So you can actually structure your data, structure your articles that way, in which Google, uh, either Google Home, or your Google device can then read that back to you. So uh, really interesting to think about, obviously, as Google is getting into many of our businesses, uh, this is getting into the content business. So uh, that can be good or bad, depending on your strategy. Uh, that's up to you guys, but we wanted to provide you guys with this insight that Google is providing that capability, not just to read quick answers back, but to read paragraphs and pages of information if the customer is so interested. All right, and of course, uh, as marketers, we all know it's all about A-B testing, right? So testing your content strategy, you wanna look at what results are coming up today on different devices. So do something, you know, like I gave you that example before for the best soy milk and vanilla latte on uh, Siri, on, uh, Google, do this, you know, whatever your queries are, see what results are out there today. Who do you have to beat out uh, in order to get into that position number one and start answering those questions? Uh, where are the results generated? Where and who? Again, who do you have to be at, beat out? As I mentioned, uh, we want to look at single versus multiple listings. So how many listings are showing up on any of those different devices, just like I did before? Uh, and ultimately, rankings do show up in the rankings at all. Um, so that's, you know, obviously you can't test that on a uh, Alexa device because you don't really get that physical one unless you do have the new show device uh, that actually does show you some screens and results. But um, it is important to see if you are ranking at all or showing up at all in any sort of voice search results. All right, uh, and so that's everything we had in terms of guiding you through your voice, uh, your video strategy. Again, the building blocks is a reminder, uh, listing accuracy, listing optimization, mobile friendly, those are really the, the local search building blocks that Google will be pulling a lot of these answers from. So make sure that that information is out there and tagged properly. Uh, think about the answers that you are gonna provide to your customers and your potential customers. And then make sure all of that data is appropriately marked up on either your website or your client's website.
Uh, and last final plug again, uh, if you need more information or would like more information, please reach out to us. Uh, again, we're a local SEO and reputation platform managing reviews. So we, we allow you to pull in uh, review management from over 20 different sites and you can respond right in the dashboard. We have listing management services, social media listing and publishing, and ultimately uh, rankings and analytics, GMB analytics to show you the progress reports right within our platform. Um, so thank you for conducting the webinar today, Colin, and thanks to everyone who attended. If you have any questions or you want to be connected with the speaker, just email us at webinars at the LSA.org. And you can take a look at what's coming and access to all of our past webinars at www.thelsa.org slash webinars. I did have a lot of questions come through about whether or not this is recording. We will be sending a recording out to the attendees within 48 hours, so you will get that. So thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your afternoon. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.